So yeah, uh, welcome everybody. So this is an, an update on the Linux WPEN space. So basically same thing we have been doing over the last couple of years. Um, this I will start with the with a little bit of an update what we have been doing in the in the kernel um, since last year. Um, so a little bit of admin stuff and also the user space updates that we need for all the kernel changes you're doing. This is more like um, updates for everybody. And then Alex will go a bit more into details about the link layer security status, what we're having. So basically like all the encryption, everything going on defined by IEEE 802.15.4 and what kind of problems we are having with that, like what's the status of that in the kernel, if you should use it, how you should use it and so on. So that is a bit more of a discussion, discussion topic, but you're obviously you're welcome to uh, stop me at any point and ask questions about the updates as well. Um, so with that, no further ado, I'll get started. So Linux WPEN, or in the kernel, it's like IEEE 802154 uh, subsystem. It's basically a low power, but also low rate wireless system. <coughs> so we are not talking megabytes here or anything. You're not streaming your video. It's more like machine to machine communication. It's a base for protocols like Zigbee or, or Thread. So also wireless hard for like industrial environment and so on. So it's it's quite old. Um, I think it's like 17 or 18 years by now. Um, so yeah, it, it's there for a while. And this thread nowadays has got a bit more attention again. Um, so what we have in the, in the Linux kernel for many years, we have a, a subsystem for that already. It was never really like, fully functioning or anything. So it was working for like the basic things and then the six low pan adaption on, on top of it. So basically running IP version six on top of this uh, low rate protocol, all of these things have been working, but there was no management or anything. Like you normally in this protocol, you have things like forming a pen, being a coordinator, handing out short addresses and so on, coordinating all these things. All these things haven't been implemented, but luckily this year, uh, Miguel started to work on this. So this is the main updates we are basically coming coming with you. So what we have is we have a normal soft Mac, we have a Netlink user space interface, we have drivers. So it's modeled a little bit like the wireless subsystem. Um, so for anybody who was doing like networking in Linux, that should be no surprise there basically. Yeah, I mean, the one thing we have is six low pen, as I said, oh, I see a typo there. Um, that's basically, taking layer two MAC addresses, reusing them in layer three with IP version six and other parts of the protocol getting elided and so on. So basically the idea is to compress everything down to fit, um, to make a IP version six uh, frame and everything, all the payload fitting into the 128 um, byte uh, frame size we're having in, the, in this protocol. Okay, so the first release we had after Plumbers last year uh, was 6.0. Um, so for this one, we didn't really have much. We have some fixes and drivers. We had one little bit of like security related part with an uninitialized value in, in dgram send message. That was like on the on the fixes side. And then Alex took um, a moment to simplify our um, array uh, or lookup for the different next header uh, compression IDs. So NHC next header compression. So the IDs for that have been looked up in a red brief. Uh, red black tree before, but that was way too over engineered basically for the setup we, we are using. And, and simple array lookup was more than enough. And that actually um, made the thing a lot more um, easier to do. So, Alex, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, the problem was there um, people started to report bugs there, which was not really a bug, but it was so complicated that people could not understand what was going on. There at first, so um, yeah, that's why the code was much be more simplified and the RB3 was overkill for all these lookup things. So it's pretty simple right now. Okay. Yeah, so that was um, pretty straightforward. That was the, like the first release. And 6.1, again, we had a bug fixes and drivers. This is like a common theme. Normally we get like, the usual churn in the in the kernel tree where you get like all kind of like fixes here and there um, coming from mostly from a lot of tools people running over the tree basically 
Um, and one thing was there that actually was an issue was like a missing in it for a, a specific list in the in the Mac uh, in the soft Mac implementation we're having. So that was that was good to get fixed. And we also had to fix the LQI recording. Um, so in the in the rework we did, we had the problem that the we initiated initiated this struct too late, and then we had like the initial reading and recording in there, and then later on it was zeroed out. So that was we fixed that with a late in it and so on. So that was good as well. And you can see the number of patches there. So the first one was eight and then 13. That is actually for our small subsystem, that is a quite common number. So we are not talking like a three digit patches or anything, right? We are really small. Um, but 6.2 was quite big actually with 40 patches. That was where Miguel really started to ramp up the work on the management uh, part of the protocol. So he, he started to introduce uh, coordinator interfaces um, we need to have like different type of interfaces. So we have monitor and the normal one and the coordinator because coordinator would allow to get all kinds of packets and all kinds of addresses in there. Normally this kind of hardware has like address filters on the hardware level to not overload the normally used microcontrollers so they don't get all the data in. They would filter out on a hardware level already if it's a short address or the, the address is not matching in. So that's a different uh, different form for the coordinator interface. You need to get all the data and do some specific setups there. And then the initial work was started for, for scanning in the new Netlink uh, scan group, basically. Come on, what's going on here? There we go. So this uh, 6.3, uh, we are again at like 26 patches. And that was when uh, Miguel was starting on the beaconing support and the scan support. So beaconing, sending out the beacons, um, if you're a coordinator, you're doing that. And for all the normal device nodes, they would scan a passive scan, obviously just listening in for beacons that are coming in. Uh, later on, we also see an inactive scan support where you actually request in beacons to be sent. But at that point, it was passive only. Then we had some, um, got some more code coming in from the conversion from platform data to the new GPIOD API. That was mostly, again, uh, all of Tree, I think Arndt and, and some other people did that um, to get all these, these drivers fixed we're having there. Uh, 6.4 was, again, a bit slow. There was only like normal driver fix and so on. 6.5, again, there uh, we picked up the active scan support and answering beacon request uh, frames that are coming in. So that is basically when you're requesting a beacon to be sent. And we also started to have support for management handling of limited devices. So, I mean, in Linux, that's not really the case, but um, in this kind of network, you have like devices with different types of functionality. Normally it's really about like the better, better usage and everything, how much power you can conserve. Like think, think about like a, a door or window sensor, right? You're a lot more happy, uh, you're happier if this thing can last like two years on a battery instead of like a few months because it's like awake all the time and responding and so on. So, and the last part for the updates again, 616, driver fixes. Nothing there, basically, uh, summertime. Miguel didn't really have much time. Um, for 67, we don't really have much scheduled. We have the usual bug fixes, everything that, that goes in. But for 68, we actually are now in a state where we have the internal pen management queued. So, this should be something that should land in 6.8. And that would allow like things like associations and disassociations of between the devices and also extending the Netlink API to get um, the list of associated devices to user space. So at that point, we can really look into having like um, a user space uh, daemon that actually runs, make sure that all what kind of nodes are available, handing out short addresses, manage all of these things and so on. So that's that's a state where we can actually go at that point. So that was that's it on the... Uh, Go ahead. Stefan, I had a quick question. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, so that, do you think you're going to, to aim to integrate that with Network Manager? Because I know that that's kind of the, at least you know from what I remembered, that was the big thing for Wi-Fi. Do you think that would be a wise thing to do for 15.4, uh, or is it maybe not? Yeah, I, I was pondering about that for a while. The problem is that um, there's actually initial support for 15.4 and 6 Lopen for the device types and so on. They have that in Network Manager. But what is the use case for someone using Network Manager and run it together with 15.4, right? I mean, that is something I would need to understand better 
who would actually do that. So for me, this is really like an embedded system type of connectivity you're having. I'm not against doing that, but I don't see myself starting any of the integration. And on the other hand, for at least for the basic pen handling, so basically the coordinator um, daem daemon running in the system, that would be something I want to have like a standalone solution for. Um, if that one talks later on to a network manager or network manager would want to re-implement these kind of things as so on, I'm open for that. Um, but I would need to understand that. So I know, for example, the the next people did some implementation for the thread stuff in conman for their nest thermostat and something like that this is something i understand because conman is a lot more like targeted for the embedded space and i see some integrations there network manager can be used there but um yeah it basically depends on, on use cases and people driving that so it's not really on my agenda but yeah alex I would definitely agree. I think like keeping the surface area that you have to you know hunt down bugs in and test much smaller, that's a good idea. I just thought I think it's pretty similar to the 802.11 in terms of like the the netlink uh, messages that you'll be sending back and forth anyways. So if anything, you can maybe glean a little bit of information from there. But you get you already know all all the details, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's possible. If if you have like a setup where you run network manager in, a, in an embedded system and you're happy with that, then there is an interest for you to do that. Um, but yeah, as always, it depends on use cases, depends on, on people driving that. Um, you have to see how that goes. Alex, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, regarding to network manager. So when I using network manager, in my case, uh, I have this NMM applet in my mate uh, environment. And then I can scan and then it pops up everything in a little list where I need to click on. But also the 800-254 use case for scans, it can really long, it can take a long time. So maybe this is something to consider that the, it is a little bit, you cannot press scan and uh, uh, waiting in 10 seconds, you have a whole scan and your things popping up there. Um, yeah, humans are too impatient. Okay? Hmm? Humans are maybe a bit too impatient, uh, like for the human time. So yeah, yeah, you, we... yeah. But yeah. but but I want to say that the degrees in uh, network manager they are maybe not a little bit made for this. But uh, yeah, you need to be a little bit patient and really holding your mouse on this available networks. But uh, yeah, th this is only a question about how they we present this in a GUI interface. But you cannot, I, I think, uh, there's a little bit more to do. Yeah, Network that. Manager does have some pretty nice uh, CLI tools, though. And I'm wondering if yeah. those would be useful just in terms of being yeah. able to do script in an embedded environment. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I wanted to say. So the the we need to. Um, make sure that we differentiate here between like the UI part and so on, which is not something I see be, see be used for that part. But at least the network manager as, as a system service being available even on embedded systems. So on. we have we have NM, NM CLI, uh, CLI and so on that's there. But also like the general integration, right? So I I did an embedded system with just like network manager setting up the soft access point and so on and handling all the other parts. So that is that is there and it may, might make a lot of sense also for the IP version six handling and so on. So if you um, don't want a red VD running and so on, but there would also be more to that. So if you want to have like a full setup, then you wouldn't need to handle specific um, IP version six messages for CIO and so on to make sure that that is working. But network manager can be used for that again, uh, depending on, on who wants to drive that or not. Um, for our test case, we would definitely have like a standalone um, coordinator just to make sure that that is working, but uh, this could also be then translated over for, for someone who wants to do that network manager. Is that something uh, that you and your team you think you'd be able to do like as part of your day job? Because I know a lot of us end up doing stuff just in our free time, you know, quote unquote. Well, I mean, uh, basically only Miguel is right now. So Miguel is. Um, Working for Bootlam, and they have like one um, customer that actually wants these kind of support. I mean, I don't know if I can talk about who that is, but I mean, you can see it in the in the Git logs from some of the people do that. So um, he is actually being like kind of paid for like doing some of these things. For Alex and me, that's really just 
a spare time right now. Um, I sometimes I have like opportunities to do that together with my day job, but right now that's not the case. And I think that's the same for for Alex. So um, that's why we are very on a on a slow pace here. So that's how it is. I think you should get a, a sticker or some kind of swag for your all the work that you put in because I know it's a lot in your spare time. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. We don't need that. Okay. Uh, any more questions on that? No. Okay. So let's move over. Um, so I hinted on that already with the, the admin update. So um, this was mostly driven by me and Alex for a while. And then when Miguel stepped up and uh, did a lot of these work and he was re really reliable and he, we can really count on like even him reviewing other people's patches and so on. So we asked him if he wanted to join. So by now we are a three person team, which is for such a small subsystem really good. Um, but at least it gives us some freedom to actually someone, so at least one of us is taking the next tree and the other one is taking the stable tree. And so we have like a bit of like shared load there. That, that is quite good. So we're doing round robin, round robin there. Um, and then for, for the user space. So we have like the WPEN uh, tools package, which uh, basically does all the configuration. Again, kind of same similar syntax than IWs. Actually, the code is based on it as well. Um, so now with all the kernel updates we are getting, obviously we need to have like this kind of support in user space as well, using these new Netlink APIs we are defining. Um, so we have beacon sending support, we have scanning support. Um, passive, I think we also have it for active now. The associations that's pending because that's pending in kernel as well. Um, what I just recently did, uh, I was on a hunch and making sure that uh, our tools are now having like full SPDX headers using the reuse tool to make sure that we are compliant in that regard and actually creating an S-bomb and so on. That is, uh, some people like that. And yeah, that that's, uh, was just like a one evening job for me to get that done. So, and also I um, started to use GitHub Actions. We have been using Travis for a while, but that falls short. Um, and now we again have like at least some CI set up as like a metrics for like GCC Clang and some other things that can be extended, but at least that's, that's something for us in user space uh, to do. And I think with that, I will switch over to Alex. So Alex, I think I will drive the slides um, or I don't, can you do that? Can you? Uh... No, but I can tell you um, next slide. Okay, please. okay. Just let me know um, and I will switch over. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you about the link layer security in the SoftMac implementation of 800.215.4 as uh, there are some problems and I saw already some people using it, but it also works when you're using it, but if you're using it in the long term and you're using it wrong, then uh, you can have some issues where you need to be aware of that uh, it, it should not work like this. And um, yeah, who I am, I'm already, Stefan already uh, told about me that I did some stuff in the WPAN and the 6 pan world in the Linux kernel. So what I mean is that we're using actually the, the Linux kernel only. We don't have a, a separate coprocessor with a different operating system and doing some serial interfacing. Instead, we don't do that. We directly speak to a driver on SBI mostly. Uh, we have also some virtual driver. And um, what I did is mostly in 802.15.4, I introduced this 800.215.4, 800 which is um, similar like NL802.11. It is the wireless subsystem because both are IEEE standards and the IEEE standards, they are very strict in defining the file layer and the Mac layer, and then uh, they stop there. And um, they're making also, the same separation between the Mac and Fi, and uh, it's already good that the wireless people was introducing something there. So we um, make it only a little bit 800.254 like what the spec says, and um, also existing wireless developers, if they do something in 800.254, they can easily get into it. So in 6 Lopan, I did something with this um, Ripple. I have a user space implementation there for Ripple D, which is only a 
a proof of concept because uh, the source routing feature there, they, they can actually using um, IPv6 option, source routing option, and then they doing some routing with it. And this um, Ripple, which is for lossy and low power networks. Um, if you are interested into it, we have this in our GitHub tree and you can easily um, test it with some namespaces and the uh, HW sim simulator for 802.54, which also exists, by the way, for 802.11 for the wireless thing. But uh, we did some tweaks that we, you can say which node can talk with another node. And, and if you put it in different net namespaces, you can do some exciting exper experiments with uh, six low pan routing. And I also did the neighbor discovery operations. This is an extension to the IPv6 neighbor discovery that because there exist some I IETF standards which extend the existing IPv6 neighbor discover discovery with 802.15.4 specific things like uh, short address and the extended address, uh, address um, which is um, how you can put that in IPv6 neighbor discovery messages. Then I did also the, um, the fragmentation or so the neighbor discovery ops. It's simple that you can make a, a different IPv6 handling according to the uh, interface type. And if you have an interface type, IEEE 802.15.4.6 open type, then you can make special handling there. It can be easily extended. But there's also more to do in the um, six low pen neighbor discovery world because they did a lot of more different things there in IETF. So in the fragmentation, this is uh, interesting because um, before six low pen um, fragmentation, there was only IPv6, uh, IPv4 fragmentation and IPv6 fragmentation, and they're using the same um, API to make fragmentation handling, and six Lopan was doing it on their own with some list handling, which was the historical reason was it was uh, getting this code out of Contiki. But uh, I adapted it that now six Lopan and IPv6 and IPv4, they are using the same fragmentation handling there. It's nice. Uh, to do that because for IPv6 we for six loop we need IPv6 anyway so they use the same code for this and yeah I did some talks about Ripple at the NetF conf if you want to check this out. Yeah. Uh, can you make this next slide please? So about the link layer security. So the story about this I was not uh, introducing it. Um, it was um, several years ago by Phoebe Buckheister, and uh, it's only the SoftMac implementation because we currently only support SoftMac uh, transceivers in our case. And uh, what I did was uh, introducing an API for the hardware dimension Netlink 802.15.4 interface, which is very close to the IEEE 802.15.4 spec. They're describing our management information base with lists and something like that. It, it looks pretty similar in the hope that the API looks at the end, like talking to a soft, to the soft Mac layer and talking to the hard Mac driver, uh, possible hard Mac driver. So it's uh, still experimental for um, various reasons. Once one I want to mention here and uh, the user space tool, I. W pen, um, they providing some dumps and scripts. It's it's really terrible. It's like IP tables. If you ever worked with IP tables, they also doing that like dumping the whole config like it is a shell, shell script to uh, reproduce the state when you booting up the system again. Uh, it works like this, but uh, it is only very experimental stuff which works right now. Next slide, please. And yeah, my answer to this, to the link layer security, 
please don't use it because um, until you know what you're doing, there are certain paths which uh, which I think it's out of code of the uh, IEEE spec. They are not solved, at least for the mesh topology. That means not uh, this association and the association if you don't use that only peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. And uh, I already seen people using it. Please don't. Can you? Next slide. So the problem there is the frame counter, which I already mentioned the management information base. They um, having a frame counter for the node itself need to maintain it. And uh, it's part of the non-spare. Um, very simplified, the non-spare is um, it's a number used once, which uh, in the in the cryptographic uh, system of the IEEE spec, I don't want to go into the details here, but you need to only to know that there's the number used only once thing, and it has a, like in the computer airways, you have a resource, the limitation of resource. So I don't know how it big it is, but at some point it repeats it itself. And if you, if it's repeat itself, then you're getting a problem there. And, um, and yeah, can you, that's some question. Uh, I was just gonna ask, um... Do, do you think that uh, you could use any additional help with the link layer stuff, or is that something you want to tackle all by yourself? Because uh, this is a great place to ask if uh, you know there are lots of people out there that are really interested in getting getting into this stuff too, right? So if you uh, if you're looking for someone to kind of offload a little bit of work to, then by all means, just you know ask for help. I would if I were yeah. you. If, if you need, give us a list you know. of people, we are we are happy to take them. <laughs> I have one person in mind, but uh, I'm not going to like volunteer them. <laughs> okay, and we can talk about that later. So it is uh, definitely something that we need to look into. Okay, uh, the frame counter is uh, pretty simple because it's increment after each frame counter is sent out, and um, yeah, that's what it stands for. And it, it's in the security management information base. Mm. Can you make this next slide? So it used this non-spare, which the frame counter is part of it. And uh, then uh, there's also some address information. And then it's combinized that with the shared key, which is uh, also known. And uh, it's only important that you need to know non-spare and the shared key together. Then it's going into the link layer security, which is some AES. CCM uh, algorithm thing. Can you go to the next slide? The, the problem is now what I told you, when, a, when the nonce pair repeats, uh, it uh, have the same number as before. And this is, this is the problem when the frame counter overflows because it's only 32 bit. And uh, when it sends out 32 bit, um, 32, uh, 2 pow 32, then uh, you overflowing the frame counter and the uh, nonce pair is not uh, a number used once anymore. And then if somebody was um, recording your message before, then uh, you're getting a problem because um, they can make some replay, uh, replay attacks um, because uh, it, there's no it doesn't save anything anymore. And yeah, can you go to the next slide? So the the thing is there, there's a solution because when before the frame counter overflows, we need to share a new key around which getting used because when you have a non number used once, again, the same thing, but you cannot use as before, but you can use it again when you have changing the key. That's why it's always combined with the key. And um, if you don't don't uh, deploy a new key, then you're getting a problem. And uh, this key deployment for a new key that, that is out of code of 800.215.4. It doesn't do that, but it it says that um, 
yeah, if you're using the non-spare again in the same thing, don't you don't do that. And um, the current behavior in Linux is that we just ignore overflows. So it is, a, it is terrible. It should not happen. Uh, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, basically the, the stand IEEE takes here is that they provide the, the plumbing, the low level plumbing for that. They define like AES and so on for the, for the hardware devices and kind of yeah. like how the structure looks like, but they completely, they very clearly say that they're not taking care of any, like how you make sure frame counters are correct. If your device joins, yeah. how you like uh, restore them, how you take them they, if you like uh, dis disassociate from a network and so on. And all the onboarding and provisioning process as well that is not part of the spec um and all the that that is also like part of like key rollover and all the other scenarios that, that we are having this is not available right now um i mean the the one key solution or the turnkey solution i know that is like threat that is doing all of that based on 15.4 yeah. but they implemented quite a lot of protocols on top of that to handle all yes. of that and it's, I mean, Alex started on implementing some of these things, but it's not like an, an easy pick and, and choose situation where we can just go ahead and say, we, we pick a few things there and we have like a full solution um, without going the full way to threat, right? So that is a bit of a bit of a problem. I mean, if we, I think also threat using it when we already established uh secure communication then uh, we can easily share a new key around before it overflows because um, then um, it's already secured but as soon it overflows you cannot make you cannot go back anymore you need to it's already too late for this can you go but again then you also have like frame counters and so on so you basically need a complete protocol for like key management within the within the network so it's yeah. something that is covering all these bases which is complex yeah so they just push uh, that on to uh, the uh, protocol layer they don't do that at the transport or like i guess the physical or, or whatever layer or the mac layer even it's not part of that at all like, so they just push it off to the protocol it's not part of the spec yeah yeah i mean th that's what they say right i mean they sorry yeah. alex if i jump in here um it, it, I mean, it basically is... they say like as and so on that's how we define it we define like this part of the uh, protocol header is like for the for the counter and all these kind of things they define the primitives and the plumbing blocks basically but the rest they really leave like to whatever application layer wants and and organizes the the mesh on top yeah so it's but I, right there, it's out of scope, but uh, they tell you what you, they're giving you hints, but you should not do with uh, when the frame counters overflows and uh, something like that. And uh, <laughs> they, um, at the uh, IETF, I think they're having also some, I think it's named PAM or something, I don't know, P-A-M, something for key change and something like that. They, they have also some different protocols to do that. But I also need to mention when we talk about I ETF and um, threat, this is all um, on an IP level. So um, but if, when people only want to use um, 800 Mac, they want Mac, they don't want to use any IP or something. I don't know. So uh, can you make the next slide? So there, but there's also another problem um, because the security layer, it has an access control list. So it has an access control list about um, each neighbor. You need to fill it up. And uh, currently you can do that manually. And when, the, when you're filling up the access control list with all the neighbors, then most people say, okay, I make frame counter CO. But you should not do that because if you do... Yeah, if you're joining a network which already transmitted something, um, you need to use the frame counter, which is the actually frame counter of the neighbor managed. Yes. And uh, there's a bootstrapping issue with this. When you're starting it with zero, then there's also a replay attack possible because um, you're trusting the, the, the first message um, which is received 
because they 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 checking if they only trusting the message when the frame count of the message which is received which is higher than the actually frame counter in the access control list so uh, yeah there's a another smaller issue with the um, access control list uh, frame counters and uh, this is a bootstrapping issue because when you're joining the network then you need to synchronize this frame counter parameter with other nodes and yeah can you go to the next slide yeah don't do it with zero and um yeah they trusting the net they own yeah they're trusting only um message with with a frame counter receive which is in a in a higher number than in the access control list can you go to the next slide so i i think actually the the frame counter thing that could be solved when they associate and deassociate i'm not sure about this but definitely not the uh, key exchange when the frame counter overflows but uh, yeah the frame counter is currently set by user but there need to be some protocol exchange going on because you don't want to um, look into other nodes all manually and uh, look what the frame counter issue uh, is right now and it's also that uh, the current that the nodes you need to they need, it need to be synchronized on a safe way. Can you go to the next slide? So, yeah, this uh, bootstrapping protocol. Um, I need to say, I, I think in the Bluetooth um, LA, in the mesh, the, the new stuff, 5.0 above, I, I think uh, the Bluetooth people, they uh, putting that into their link layer. But uh, IEEE doesn't do that. Um, so far, I know I, I'm not sure com complete about this. But uh, the Bluetooth people say can say, okay, yeah, we're putting that in our spec because the IEEE people they say um, um, out of scope. But uh, yeah, and the commercial using, um, I, I, I'm not sure about this when when this is uh, out of scope of IEEE because you always say that um, you're using a lot of open standards, but then you need to have a bootstrapping protocol, which is only specific to your to your thing, what you want uh, to use. Like um, MLE, it was developed at IETF, but uh, it stopped to um, being developed at IETF. I know, I know Threat is uh, doing that. And it solves all this problem, but it's um, yeah. We, we need to look if um, this uh, can be adapted to it. And also, you you want something which works out of the box. I mean, currently when um, you use in Linux and you you are not aware about these problems that I mentioned right now, it, it works out of the box. But then you um, going into a certain area where um, when the frame buffer issue, uh, frame counter issues coming up, that um, yeah, you need to solve that somehow in the upper layer. I think we yeah. might have time for like one question. Does anyone else have a question or anything? Because uh, I think we're just a bit over. Oh, okay. Uh, how many slides are, are you guys good? I think uh, it only like slide. one or so. Yeah, don't use uh, the uh, LS sync and. Mm -hmm. uh, I think solving it, it's a little bit complicated. Um, how are we doing that, that everybody's happy and we can still talk with other implementation because I there's kind of a person that might be interested in doing that. Like, so I'll get in touch with them and I'll see if that's something they're interested in. They wanted to contribute upstream, but they were thinking Zephyr. So, but I think if they're putting it up to Linux, that's fine too. Any other questions? Um, no, just just a, one last comment for me about the so whatever if it's MLE or something else we also need to take into account that it's not only Linux right so Zephyr would Zephyr or whatever other Archos that is, is using that 
uh, would also need to be a target for that. Because I mean, right now we can only test like LSEC between different operating systems, but only the basic plumbing, making sure that we can actually decrypt messages and so on, but not like the full yeah. scenario. And when, when Alex talked about not using it, it's really about like for products and anything like it's not like for, for yeah. testing and development, yeah, that's fine. And there's also a problem with uh, Wireshark, but this is uh, another thing. Don't trust the Wireshark things because uh, <laughs> the, the hooks are in a uh, wrong position. Okay, so I think we. But you can use a sniffer. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think we're good here. Is there any last question or something from someone else? 